In part, the reason why there is so little sympathy, and this goes to the whole sort of idea of elective affinities with this place, but the American public has very few points of contact with the victims of those tortures, A, because they, all of this stuff is, was held secret by the Bush administration until it ex was extracted through litigation, but B, also because these people are the other. What allows Alice to feel close to, to love certain people is, the flip side of that is to cast others as not worthy of that kind of partiality. And I would, I would submit that, that part of the reason why people either don't know or don't care about the sort of like thousands of people <coughs> who were subjected to US torture is precisely uh, because they were not American. The, the, the ticking time bomb scenario in discussions about torture does so much work. Right? That, that's, that's often the, the, the place by the, the point at which people uh, attempt to justify torture. So uh, the points that Amrit's making about how that's just factually implausible, it just has not ever presented itself in, in reality is an, an, an important one. Um, and, I, you know, I thought I'd talk a little bit about, um, you know, stipulating that it's even possible in that situation. You know, why, why is torture prob problematic and not necessarily in her, in her worldview? Um, and, you know, and I think, I think Alice reveals a lot about um, why she thinks it's permissible. There are all these, obviously, references to nature and the state of nature and animals sort of in the wild being slaughtered and her, her like a gazelle just sort of being taken over and submissive and helpless. Um, and in that cruel state of nature, um, this, is, this is just another thing that happens. Um, and that, you know, that's, a, that's a critical point because sort of in, in, in legal theory and moral theory, um, what, what governments strive to do is to ab abandon a state of nature when anything is possible and where might always prevails. Um, that, that's really that sort of first principle of, of, of government. And, um, you know, counterposed to a state of nature is, is a state of law. Um, and... Um, What's what's you know sort of important about what happened in the the, the, the Bush administration era is uh, decisions to put these individuals, these others as they were, in a state of nature and outside of a, a state of of law. I mean, the, sort of the the whole point of the whole construction of Guantanamo, for example, uh, and this is re revealed in in DOJ memorandum, is to develop a prison, not for punishment or, or, um, or adjudicating guilt or innocence. Uh, it's to establish a, a place, uh, uh, quote, outside the jurisdiction of United States courts. Um, that was the avowed purpose. Other places were considered um, and rejected because the jurisdiction of courts might reach those places. But Guantanamo seemed to suit the, uh, fit the bill um, so that uh, endless, violent in, um, uh, uh, interrogations on so-called terrorist suspects could occur there in a state of nature and outside of a state, state of law. Um, and, you know, the, the uh, law, I mean, she sort of questions this, this notion of human rights, and that's exactly right. Human rights is obviously... Um, counterpose with a state of nature because the the norm of human rights is it, it doesn't matter you know to to what country you're a citizen of or what your relationship is to a particular government as a human being you're not a gazelle um you have uh certain sort of profound fundamental uh uh rights and dignity that must be respected by other individuals um and that's in part what was lost in in this this period, um, and uh, you know, and and there, there's a you know the 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 there, there's this human rights norm and also these constitutional reasons uh, that that 
torture is so problematic that you know there's there's just some really archetypal wrongs some profound wrongs that that you would think our constitutional system would never tolerate there's some constitutional rights that we balance like whether or not you can enter a home and whether or not that's reasonable in, in searching someone um, but but there are some that I think we we classify or up until a certain point it classified as as always impermissible and you sort of put slavery in that category. It's hard to sort of imagine a cost-benefit analysis argument in favor of slavery just because it may be more efficient or works in this day and age. And I would think torture is similar um, in that it's just, it's um, so profoundly antithetical to um, constitutional values and, and, and human rights. So. Are there any questions? Um, those are strategies that were actually used and advocated by the FBI in trying to elicit um, actionable intelligence from alleged terrorist suspects. Um, and uh, routinely, I think they're both uh, with respect to individuals who are held in military detention in Guantanamo Bay and with respect to individuals who are held in CIA custody, the FBI found that um, it would be in the process of, you know, talking, building rapport with a with a detainee and trying to get, you know, getting useful information out of them, and then the military or the CIA would come in and totally botch things up by using brutalizing, dehumanizing uh, interrogation methods on these people. Yeah, I mean, sort of part of, part of the just to, to add to that part of the. The Bush administration's frustration with the FBI tactics is that um, they have this fantasy of a ticking time bomb scenario where, like, sort of Jack Bauer can point a gun at somebody's knee and and get immediate intelligence that will save thousands of lives. Rapport building is sort of slow; it takes time um, and and effort. And so, one sort of critical moment in the in the, the war on terror, just you know, it's just an, an example of this. Precisely, the United States had apprehended uh, a, a man called, uh, named Abu Zubaydah, who the United States believed was the number three in Al-Qaeda. Um, there are, I think, 10 people who have had that, that designation uh -huh. at some point or another. It turned out actually to be factually incorrect, but they believed that they, uh, they got the prize. He was injured in a firefight in Pakistan. A Johns Hopkins surgeon was secretly flown to sew him up. Uh, sent to a secret prison in Thailand where he was um, uh, subject to this sort of rapport building interrogation by uh, 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 Alice Lebanese, right? A Lebanese yeah. American interrogator who had, knew a lot about Al Qaeda uh, and had um, been, you know, working on the coal bombing and was really sort of aware of sort of the cultural dynamics of speaking to these, um, the, um, these individuals. Uh, sort of literally was nursing Abu Zubeda back to health. Alu Sufan claims anyway that he started to talk, but the CIA became impatient. They believed that he was not giving as much intelligence as they believed was necessary. Same dynamic in, in Guantanamo when the interrogations were going slowly and not producing actionable intelligence because um, there was this expectation that everyone has a sort of chock full of information that would solve the war on terror. Um, but in fact, the reason they weren't giving intelligence wasn't the inadequacy of the interrogation techniques. It's they had, in in eighty percent of the cases, people who knew nothing. So, so back to the Abu Zubaydah example, um, the the CIA wants to take over the interrogation, um, and after some infighting, the FBI basically leaves, thinking that this is a, this is a crime scene. Um, and the CIA gets authorization from Bush administration lawyers to justify a series of interrogation tactics. This one in August 2002 is one of the first so-called torture memos when Justice Department lawyers uh, offer legal justification for what otherwise would be plainly prohibited interrogation techniques, including the, the drowning technique, or waterboarding. Um, and, uh, you know, um, 
the, 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 apparently after that, uh, Abu Zubaydah uh, stops talking, um, and uh, that only leads them to suspect that he's hiding even more. Um, and sort of ratchets it up the, the, the interrogation techniques, um, and so it's it's you know sort of all this endless cycle of of ignorance and. Um, and sort of lost values. I think not very many people know that the case for, the United States government's case for invading Iraq was buttressed by false information obtained through torture. Um, there's the key, and this is documented in a, in a Senate report. There's a guy called uh, Ibn al-Sheikh al-Libi who was um, transferred from the United States to Egypt when he was tortured in Egyptian custody. And basically, this is all in the report, he was tortured, um, and so he confessed to whatever the torturers wanted to hear. And the piece of evidence that they called from him was uh, that he said that there was a connection between Saddam Hussein and, um, and Al-Qaeda, in particular that Saddam Hussein was training, was organizing a training of, of Al-Qaeda uh, uh, in, in weapons of mass destruction. And that piece of evidence was specifically cited by Colin Powell in his um, speech before the UN in justifying the invasion of the war, yeah, in, in the invasion of Iraq. It's quite, quite incredible. So, I mean, that is a perfect example of how torture can, not, not only doesn't work, that it can put a country down a, such a disastrous path with so, such huge implications for the loss of life. Mm -hmm. In terms of my current projects, I'm, I'm, I work on counterterrorism related um, uh, human rights abuses across the world. Um, I used to work at the ACLU, um, and uh, where I used to work on US-focused litigation, but part of my strategy now is to work outside the United States in trying to secure accountability for US-related torture, and the, in, in part because the courts in the United States have been uh, so resistant to, to giving tor uh, torture victims their day in court. And then I deal with, I work on, quest, on issues relating to the detention without charge or trial, torture of terrorist suspects, and so on. And I agree that the Sheikh Libby uh, piece is really, really important. Um, I think Colin Powell called it the most embarrassing professional moment of his life. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, there, there's this also this question about whether or not torture works, and that there's, a, you know, there's a, um, that uh, question depends on another question, which is, well, what are you trying to achieve? Um, torture certainly works in producing a false confession. Um, the question is, does it work for producing a reliable confession? And, and, and um, you know, another example I'd bring up is uh, an instance when torture worked to produce a false confession. This was in the, in the, the Korean War when a number of downed U.S. airmen were detained by the you know, Chinese communist forces and subject to a series of interrogation techniques that ultimately were replicated literally by the U.S. interrogators. These interrogation techniques focused not on uh, physical torture or interrogation, but forms of psychological torture, things that Amer the American public routinely describes as, I don't know, just tough love or, or nothing particularly difficult. Uh, enforced isolation for periods of time, uh, sleep deprivation, stress positions for long periods of time, um, uh, and uh, humiliation, you know, sort of forced nudity. And, and, uh, and so uh, this airman said what it caused him, the, in the slow diabolical destruction of his mind. And he ultimately confessed. He confessed to a plot to, I'm not sure what it was, it, it dropped biological weapons over, over uh, uh, Korea. Um, and th at that point, the U.S. government didn't hesitate in calling this what the U.S. government now hesitates to call this. They called it torture and has, in numerous instances, prosecuted individuals, uh, members of the, the Japanese army for using waterboarding um, and a sheriff in Texas for waterboarding. Um, it's it's sort of uh, only only recently that sort of walked away from what we assumed was a consensus about what is illegal. Um, so my work, uh, I used to be an um, uh, an academic, and in that context, worked on uh, 
uh, representing detainees in Guantanamo and other cases arising out of the, the war on terror. Um, I'm now the legal director of uh, the Center for Constitutional Rights, uh, which has for years um, been on the, the forefront of, of challenging uh, torture um, and indefinite detention. Um, and uh, so still represent detainees in, in, in Guantanamo. And, and like Amrit, we're uh, trying to devise creative strategies to hold government officials accountable for uh, torture and other, other war crimes in light of the very obvious um, uh, reluctance of U.S. courts to do anything about the actions of, of, of government officials. U.S. courts are our current sort of political system. To, uh, how, to what degree has this changed since the Bush administration? Are you still doing it? Go ahead. Oh, I think um, so. It's it's hard to you know hard to know for sure, but I think um, the 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 most uh, brutal methods of interrogation used by the, the first Bush administration have largely been abandoned. Um, the Bush administration, sorry, Obama administration says that they've, they've closed the CIA, secret CIA detention sites where so-called high-value detainees were disappeared for a period of years and tortured. Um, conditions in Guantanamo, f frankly, are uh, better than they were before. Um, so um, I think clearly the worst excesses of the, the, the sort of the Bush, the first four, the Cheney era, um, have have passed, um, but uh, you know, in other critical respects, there 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 are some sort of incidents of this initial um, these initial actions that still remain sort of obsessive secrecy about um, about past conduct, um, which the Obama administration continues to assert in litigation in equal measure to how you know, the Bush administration asserted so that so that victims of torture, for example, want to sue um, their torturers or companies that participate in torture, the Obama administration, like the Bush administration before it will say, you have to dismiss the lawsuit because this implicates state secrets. Um, and uh, the, the Obama administration has been equally aggressive in arguing that they have a right to detain people indefinitely in the, the war on terror in Guantanamo um, and um, in resisting in the courts calls for accountability for past wrongs.